make farmers sign contracts to use these very dangerous pesticides. That's really what's been going on. It only got introduced into the world in 1996. It's very new. The whole GM food experiment is only started since 1996. And the first crop was soybeans. And all this happened in the U.S., of course. And today, all soybeans produced in the U.S. are considered genetically modified. The effect on human genetics, it is still undetermined because it, it's such a new uh, experiment. We are eating different foods than we have eaten in our entire evolution as a species only in the last 20 years. So Homo sapiens has been on this planet for 200,000 years. The genus Homo has been on this earth for 2 million years, right? So. The, the, the effect on the human genome is something that it, it's not really being studied, but it's definitely going to have a profound effect. Now this, this term biotech, it has all the hallmarks of religion. I was just in, uh, in Heidelberg and I was on the train with this young Korean kid and he was in the master's program for biotech. I mean, all, all the, the young scientists, they all want to go into biotech because it's a hot new market. Uh, they've decoded the human genome now here in the last 10, 15 years, never before. But the problem is, is it's building a lot of illusions, pretending like we now understand the human genome so well that we know that this one gene codes for this trait, and this gene codes for this trait, and here's the cancer gene, and we're going to control that so we don't get cancer. But in reality, it is infinitely more complicated than that. And what we don't know is vastly larger than what we do know. The expert on this is Jeffrey Smith. And I'm going to be citing him in a minute here. From the processed foods that we have been eating for in the last century, we have distorted, first of all, the human endocrine system, our hormonal system. And then as time goes by, it takes a lot longer to alter human DNA. That takes several generations. But we're definitely on the path to that happening. At this time, at least 25% of U.S. couples are infertile, cannot reproduce. And it's probably much higher than that because of underreporting. You know, who's going to admit that, right? Sperm counts are down over 50% in the last 50 years. One-sixth of eight-year-old girls today are at menarche. So that's the beginning of adulthood, you know, maturity. One-sixth of eight-year-old girls. A sexual ambiguity, what's the word? Genetic fluidity, androgyny, all that is rampant in the world today. Who's really, who's really done a lot of study in this area is Greenpeace with their study of hermaphroditic fish and birds fish and birds that have both sexes in one animal, right? The return of infectious diseases. Most soybeans that are grown are not used to provide edamame in, in Japanese restaurants, okay? Mm -hmm. Most soybeans that are grown, the vast majority of it is converted, is processed into partially hydrogenated soybean oil, which is probably the most common processed food ingredient in the world. Everything has partially hydrogenated soybean oil. That, that's why they did it, because they could add it to everything and they could make foods last on the shelves indefinitely. That, that was their goal. Hydrogenating all these snack foods, why, why does it preserve the foods? Here's why. Because microbial scavengers won't feed off a dead food. These foods are dead. I'm not kidding. You can really leave these foods out in the open, uncovered, and bugs won't get on them. We can't digest these hydrogenated foods, and through leaky gut syndrome, as they get into our bloodstream and become part of arterial plaque, they can't be broken down there either. And it's in everything. Hydrogenated oils are in everything. So just start reading the labels on any snack food. Trans fats cannot occur in nature. That only occurs two ways, by heat and by hydrogenation. Trans fatty acids double the risk of heart attack and kill at least 30,000 people in the U.S. each year. 
Once your heart becomes clogged with these trans fats, you can't out-exercise it. So I have a whole article, a, a, a short little chapter on my website because a friend of mine, that's exactly what he did. He had a stent put in. And when they talk, start talking about stents, if the people don't change their lifestyle, then you should start talking about coffin sizes because that's what's coming next. He was a bon vivant. He was an expert on expensive wines and expensive foods, this guy. I mean, he really knew. He was Irish, too. <laughs> Good friend of mine. And uh, so anyways, he had the, the bypass surgery and had a stent put in. You know that word, stent? Mm -hmm. uh, a, a stent is like a little sleeve that they put inside the coronary artery to keep it open. It's a real bad idea. Of course, it attracts plaque. You know, plaque is in the whole body, it's not just in the heart. So, but this guy thought that he could still drink t two bottles of expensive wine and eat all these rich foods in these beautiful restaurants. He had a lot of money, lived in Panama, living the high life, right? Was on the treadmill 45 minutes every morning. So, he was on the treadmill 45 minutes every morning. I'm over here, I was in England, and I get this call from his wife. Oh, she's crying. Steve dropped dead on the treadmill. I went down and found him dead on the treadmill. So, that, so I wrote this article called Death on the Treadmill. So my point is, yeah, exercise is really good for you if your spine is adjusted and also if your arteries are clear and if you're not on blood pressure medication. Now there's a famous guy George Bernard Shaw, who said, no diet will remove all fat from your body because the brain is in entirely fat. Without a brain, you might look good, but all you could do is run for public office. How'd that get in there? <laughs> <laughs> write this down. I want everybody to write this down. Write down, Jeffrey Smith, GMO Foods, YouTube. I've gone to his lectures before. I've read all his books, and I summarize those books in my chapter online, but the second crop in America that followed suit was Liberty Corn. Liberty Corn is genetically modified. Now mo most of the corn grown in America is not to put corn on the cob on the tables of American dinner tables. It's to produce high fructose corn syrup which is the preferred sweetener in all soft drinks, in all snack foods, in all cookies, not just in America, but all over the world. It's an altered sugar, it's indigestible, but it makes you fat, and it comes from a genetically modified plant, Liberty Corn. So as long as you're writing, write this down. There's a movie, you can get it off Netflix, it's called King Corn. King Corn. It's a funny movie, but it's, it's dramatic and it's very, it'll, it'll teach you about the problems with corn today. We use it a lot for cheap animal feed, the soy and the corn. Yes, that's exactly right. Out of it. Okay, and, and I'm glad, glad you brought that up, Arnold, because here's the thing. They're trying to economize. This is the, the confined corporate animal industry, the cattle industry, the dairy industry. Cows eat grass. You put a group of cows in, in the middle of a big field of grass, and in the middle of the field you put a pile of corn shucks, corn husks from genetically modified corn. You put that in the middle of the field. They will not touch it. They will not touch it, right? But in confined animal husbandry, confined, you know, corporate animal husbandry, we're going to, where it's, they're just on dirt in these huge pens, we're going to pour into their feed troughs, what? Corn husks from genetically modified Liberty corn. And also, we're going to put these pellets that are what? Rendered animal parts. Rendered animal parts, that means extra parts after they slaughter the animals. It's true cannibalism. So, 
The movie, in case you haven't seen this movie, everybody has to see this movie, Food, Inc. Food, Inc. is that's one of the most important movies about processing of meat that was ever made. Okay, at, at the present time, there are four, four main crops that are almost completely genetically modified at this time. Corn, soybeans, canola, and cottonseed. So cottonseed oil, we're seeing a lot of cottonseed oil in processed foods these days. That is also genetically modified. Did you say canola? What is canola? canola? It's a cheap ingredient for processed foods that gives it an indefinite shelf life. It's in everything. These foods are very tasty. They taste really good, and that's a whole different field. It's from the science of the flavorists. This was in uh, Eric Schlosser's book, Fast Food Nation. That's another great book, Fast Food Nation by Eric Schlosser. And he talks about the flavorist industry. These processed foods, if they really tasted like the actual ingredients in the foods, it would be like eating this desk. You know, it would be like eating cardboard. It has no flavor. So these, these delicious flavors that people are addicted to, like McDonald's secret sauce and popular snack foods, Oreos, cookies, the things that you see everywhere, they have a very specific flavor, which is a chemical formula. It, they're, they're chemicals, it's, it's artificial. It, it's, it has nothing to do with the actual ingredients, the, the foods that they use to make it. And they use that to psychologically reinforce that flavor as your comfort food. And they have been doing this for a really long time. Brand loyalty, but it's more than brand loyalty. It's like a psychological addiction that at the end of every day, I have to sit down in front of the TV with this snack in order for the world to seem right to me. I mean, this is very sophisticated, guaranteed, billion dollar marketing. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey Smith goes into all these areas in much clearer detail. And I'm just kind of like suggesting. So Fast Food Nation and Jeffrey Smith's books uh, about genetically modified foods. Does anybody have any questions about any, any of that? Yeah. I have a quick question. All the soy and most of the corn, like 80-90%. Look and see where they were manufactured, where they were processed. Okay. If it's in the U.S., definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So there's no laws then protecting us as consumers? They can pass any laws that they want, but if the laws are not enforced, they don't do us any good. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really happening in, in the global food industry. It's the consolidation of, of the entire industry into fewer and fewer companies. Like for example, Jeffrey Smith talks about that. In 1975, there were over 3,000 slaughterhouses in America. Today there are 13. 13? 13. Yeah. So it's controlled by very few corporations. Like, like three or four. They control the meat industry, and that's not just cattle, that's pork, chickens, and turkey, all of those controlled by three or four corporations, that's it.